All right, so once again, I'm live. Got Shaq, Frank Nitty with me. Um, won't be on long. Just got to break down some things I haven't been able to break down on all the way. Um, because like I said, you know, last night we had show Bishop, then I had show Miss. Um, so let me get back to this interview because I'm not kind of done with it yet. But I'm, I'm finishing up tonight. Let's get to that to this interview because I'm not done with it yet. I'm almost done with it. So he was on. I don't know what's up with Shaq. Um, you see the link or whatever, but yeah, I'm on. So I got to bring this up. There he is. Hey, what's up, Shaq? Hey, salute, man. What's good with it? Oh, let me tell Frank me on, man. Yeah. This is going to be more about California and New York, really, because California just increased their minimum wage. Um, so, um, More jobs will be lost. Put like that. So, uh, let's put it like that. I think they said they got paid their fast food workers twenty dollars an hour. So, that's gonna be a hell of a price to pay for somebody, unfortunately. Crazy shit. Frank, where you at, buddy? Waiting on you, brother. <laughs> but let me get back to this interview. I, I'm, I'm almost done with it last night. But like I said, I had to break this interview down in three segments because this guy is a snake oil salesman, Shaq. Anything you hear can and will be used against you, Shaq. Well, it can be used against him, not you. But against him. Um, the copper act and cop under six, copper act 107, cop act 1976. This is for use made fair use purposes by new means and friends. This is for education purpose only. And also, it's for Shaq to break down. <laughs> What's going on?
Well, I don't know. So Frank, I won't. So we're gonna get y'all to break this down. This is very interesting. Yeah, I just resent it to you, man. Look, Fra Shaq, hey, Frank, we're bringing that thing down. I'm, I'm finishing this interview today. I told you I was gonna get to it. I told you the last couple of interviews I've been I've been playing. You know, they've been lengthy. Um, I played half of one, but that one was out 50 minutes. But this one went up 50 minutes. So I'm at minute 38. I want you to hear this. But let me let watch watch this snake oil salesman, Mr. Adams again. Now we're going to devise a program. Anything he says can and will be used against him. Okay, so you hear anything you like? Just tell me stop it. And that they're going to help me divide on how to reach out to those services. And I want those brothers to become recruiters to go inside the, the shelters. But you're not going to do that if you are afraid to get on the ground and have these one-on-one -on -one, uh, uh, conversation. I've been here, man. You know, I know, I know what it is to buy a nickel bag and make eight joints so mommy can feed herself. I know what it is to run numbers. Yeah, you I know what it up. is to do all those things. So I'm comfortable among my folks. And the problem that a lot of people don't understand is they don't know how authentic I am about this work, but they're gonna look back over it and say, we had a mayor that came from us and delivered for us, even the billions of dollars that I'm putting into MWBEs that we've never had before. People are gonna look back over these years and say, this brother was real about what he's doing because that's why I'm doing it. I see you but, people wrapping up. I, 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 two more questions. How do debit cards for migrants compare to New hmm. York City welfare benefits? I like that. That's a good question because that was one of the biggest myths. And I think the Daily News just did a piece today of saying why this makes sense. So here's what happened. We were paying people, because we, by law, we got to feed them three meals a day. We got to feed the migrants um, three meals a day. When I told the team, we spent, we got to bring down the cost of this by 30% because it was costing us too much money, $12 billion over three years, $4 billion already. One of the places was food. We were seeing that we were having a 10% food waste. People were getting food that they didn't, didn't want and they discarded. So my team came together, first deputy mayor, Sheena Wright, first black woman to be a first deputy mayor. She she came up with a team called Mochify, the MWBE, black product. They said that we can give people food cards where they can only purchase food and baby supplies. You will save uh, 60, $600,000 a month in course, people will buy the food that they, they want and not giving it to them from someone from some large, large conglomerate. Then they will ha have to spend the cards in the bodegas, the supermarkets, the local stores, so the money stays inside the com community. And, and the program is run by a person of, a person of color. We're saving seven, over $7 million a year we have no more food waste because people are buying what they want. It's a black-owned company, so we put money back into a black business. It's like I said, I, I, I was going, going to do. And you cannot buy anything but food or baby supplies. It's a complete win. Mm -hmm. But people heard it, and it was sensationalized. Oh, you're giving money to my group. They only get $13 a day for the three meals. It's, it's a winning program. Oh, yeah, me? Is it a yeah. win? It's not that I have a problem with it. It's that, again, the sensationalism has a lot to do with the fact that you got up and declared that we have this migrant crisis. And I thought it was er interesting, your earlier point about the difference between how Ukrainian migrants are being received versus uh, migrants, black and Latino migrants. Because, again, you gave a town hall where you were the one who gave this speech and, and incent like you incentivized New Yorkers to feel this way. Feel which way? This feel like that there is a migrant crisis where the migrants are being treated differently than them, where they're getting resources, that the migrants are getting resources that are not being given to them because you were the one who presented to the city that you had to cut budgets across because of the migrant crisis, even though recently the, uh, you decided that you all actually do have the money to handle the migrant issue that just wasn't publicized as much. No. So this goes back to sister, my original sister, discussion. So you're an attorney and you, I, I'm amazed. I think your art is, I'm just going to throw it out there and, and make people feel Mayor that Adams, way Before you say her. it, there's an entire you know, council, sister, listen, council sister, that knows your let me, let me, Sister, let me, let me, we, we still don't have the money for the migrant. We spent it 12 billion dollars in three years four billion dollars already what i said to new york is at that town hall this issue will bankrupt us will destroy our city this issue you call specific the, countries i remember not, you calling the countries that the migrants no, were from no, sister, they weren't no, the ukrainian no, migrants you weren't sister, talking about them so, so sister, what happens when sister, we don't have oh, hold on, sister, sister i did not call the countries what they were from 
from. I went it's to the on country. video. I went to Mayor the country. Adams. I went to Ecuador, Colombia, Mexico to get a full understanding of the flaw. Oh, I went to yeah. the southern border just as I went to those brothers in Burger King. Tor, before you were going to go to go DC yeah. and uh, when you were going to go to DC to buy to talk to Joe Biden about the migrant crisis, but you were stopped because they had the FBI had to take your phones. Good Lord, you just make up stuff. Did I make that up? That's yes. it, that's reported. Sister, the FBI sister, didn't seize your phones. Sister, the FBI didn't mm-hmm. seize your phones. No, but they didn't you, investigate no, your top you just, aides. That's what, not happening. What did you just say? Mm-hmm. You just. You just I, Said, I remember the tour stayed, that you went you, on you, when you were going to the border. When you were and where did I come DC back? I came to, back because somebody President had to take Biden my phone because it stopped. I said I remember on the day of. I remember it because it well, was you reported. got a bad, you got amnesia. Oh, me and the news, you're, you're, me and the media. No, 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 no. This is this is important. Okay. This is important. I want you to understand. I want you to understand the hypocrisy mm. of people when the law enforcement does something every day. It's bad. But when they do something against Eric Adams, oh, it's good. <laughs> you know, come no, on. Let's I didn't make say that. I said what happened. Okay. I didn't say that it was good. I, I, I don't think it's I good that our back, mayor is being investigated came, for illegal campaigns. I, came, I don't think that's good. I came back because of not that they had to take my phones. Mm. That is that is not true. And you should. I, I said know, it happened I, I, that I day. Don't know. No, it, it did not happen that day. I said it was reported before you were going that you were on your way. Yes, it was, Mayor Adams. It was reported wrong. Where your phone? Did the FBI seize your phone? Did they search your top eight? Not that day. Did they search the home of several several people? Okay. Yes. That's what I said, and I didn't say that was a good thing. I don't think it's good that our mayor is being investigated by the FBI. So, Mayor Adams, so what happens when New York City doesn't have the money for migrants, and then you know the migrants are in this city, and they probably have to do what most poor people have to do, which is sometimes resort to crime. Right. How is that going to make the city safe? Right. Right. And 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 that's and that's part of the problem. Imagine having a group of people 18 to 24 years old and being told you can't do anything all day. Mm-hmm. When you go when you go uh, to these hercs and you're seeing these young people and I walk in and I talk with them, some of them come from West Africa, South America, Central America, all they're saying is, man, we, we just want to work. We don't want to sit around here all, all day and not do anything. That is why the real focus should be on our national government that's saying, why are you doing this to New York? Why you check out what they're doing? They're doing it to New York, they're doing it to Chicago, they're doing it to Los Angeles, mm-hmm. they're doing it to Houston. What is the same in all those cities? All black mayors, mm. all black mayors. And so, what we're saying, same thing that I'm going through here, my brother Johnson is going through, my sister Bass is going through, my brother Turner is going through. So, our folks are what they wanted to happen. Governor Abbott wanted it to happen. We're going to turn these uh, uh, cities against their mayors. We're going to create this environment where they're all going to go against mm. their mayor. Go Google what they're doing to my brother in Chicago. Go Google what they're doing to Sister Bass. So the cities have now turned against these black mayors that are making real change for the first time. By over and, and black they, people. And, and, and they're using this to say, okay, these black mayors are not competent. They can't run their cities. Mm-hmm. They're getting everything to the migrants and asylum seekers. This was a perfectly executed plan that we are buying into. Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up, real quick. Let me say something real quick. Let me say something real quick, real quick for a second. <laughs> okay, so you're letting, yeah, so you're, that's what them, for. so you're letting them use you then? That, that I kind of see what he's saying. I can see that. I can see the little you know, uh, you know, conspiracy. It. I can see the little conspiracy. I can see that. That's what they're doing. That's why all, you notice all the either women, either mayors or or, or or DAs or something like that, are doing like shady shit. These women and shit, and they all like in the limelight, you know, or like a month ago they were. So I kind of see this, but at the same time, you got to take accountability, brother. You didn't put it on yourself. You you let these people use you like that. You know, you already seen. You know. Now check this out. Now, now watch me. Watch me eviscerate this lie, though. Watch this. Yeah, you know, he didn't he have to. He said New York. Was, he didn't have to go with the policy, but but my bad. When you under Bloomberg was a sanctuary city, he said when you that. under Bloomberg, hey, yeah, that sanctuary city was a bad idea. He should. He couldn't. Yeah. He didn't have to agree with that. But then I, I guess know. you got Governor know. Hope, Cho, whatever the hell her name is over there. Women. No, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. He, he's a liar too, though, because Denver, Colorado, is just as liberal as New York. And Denver, 
is Chuck Kicking talking about getting the Migas out and putting them to mm. and moving them to Chicago and New York. And Denver got a white mayor. Boston, Massachusetts got an Asian mayor. So mm. he just trying to throw it on the public. No, dude, you said this is a sanctuary city. That's what you said. That's true. You got to. That's what I'm saying. He got to be held accountable. Just like them, you know, them DAs and all that, and 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 yeah. Fanny and all them that was doing that. They got to so be. Held got I don't saying. know. We can't just be putting that the black thing on us. Oh, because I'm a black man. It's like I mean, I could see the conspiracy. I could see, but then, nah, you full of shit because you like I said, like you just said, you the one that agrees with the, the sanctuary city. You, were, you you supported by you supported by Bloomberg. I don't see the conspiracy. That's the conspiracy right there. Mm. So. You know, matter of fact, let him keep talking. He gonna because he's gonna hang himself one more time. She and matter of fact, if you listen to the woman, she said you over policing black people anyway. You heard what she said. Damn. <laughs> she, I don't even think I think she's African. I don't even think she I don't even think she's from this. I don't know if she's from this country, but I know she's African or something because her her name it looked like she had an African name. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't see gave, her name up there, but let me, let me look at it. Yeah, they gave her to work. I inherited a city that was in disarray, <laughs> disarray. You know, and you, no matter how much you do your analysis, you got to walk away with this brother got more private sector jobs in the history of the city. We reached that point. This brother had his bond rated increase, forty percent increase in crime when I came in. We're now. now Drop those crimes. 13,000 guns removed off our city. Outpacing the state in reading and writing for our children in the public schools, school system. 62 million tourists are back here. More housing felt vouchers. You go down the list, invest in NYCHA. You go down the list, you're seeing a brother that managed the city that people said was unmanageable. And we did it in two years and three months. It's my last question. <laughs> Do you believe the Biden administration's border policies have fueled the worst border crisis in U.S. history? In 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 New York, you said New York history or, or in US America? History. In America history. I think, I think I'll leave it at New York. New York yeah, history. I think it's well. It definitely impacts us, but I think it's an accumulation of what the White House is failing to do, and the Republican-led Congress is failing mm -hmm. to do, and other administrations. Mm -hmm. People don't want to deal with the fact that we need real immigration reform. And let me tell you what that should look like. Do you know right here in our country where we are decreasing in population in many cities? We're hurting for people in many cities. When people come across the border, the national government should say, you're going to go to this city where we need populations. Stay there for three years, and then you can go anywhere you want in the country. We need to use this crisis as an opportunity. Our cities are hurting. In Kentucky, they're hurting for backstretch workers in the racing industry. We should be saying, you want to come here? You're going to go to Kentucky. You're going to stay for three years. You're going to learn how to be in the country and work. That's how we should do it, instead of just saying, go wherever you want, and allowing this to be politicized by the by the the governor of of texas and say we're going to now we're going to hurt chicago hurt new york hurt los angeles uh hurt philadelphia we just got a sister who's the was the was the elected mayor the day she was being sworn in a plane of migrants was were coming in wow. none was coming before wow. when, no was no migrants was going to los angeles until bass became mayor when I, when I when the first female black mayor became mayor, mm -hmm. when she became mayor, they said, let's start sending them, send them to Los Angeles. They playing us, man. They playing us. Wow. <laughs> you know that? I, I, I respect any elected <laughs> official who can come have this conversation because uh, these are the tough questions. Yeah, from your constituents. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt. You know, what can y'all do to work together? <laughs> we, we should. Yeah. You're, 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 because no matter. Because both we, of y'all care. Yeah, without a doubt. You know what's actually interesting? You said that because when I was when I was in, um, uh, you know, I'm in rooms with folks and I walk out of those rooms and I say, you know what? We both disagree, but we both love the city and love our people. We have to separate the 10 percent of disagreement and focus on the 90% that we agree on. You agree that our children should be educated. You agree that our brothers, when they get, my sisters, when they get out of, of Rikers, should come out better than what they went in. You agree that I, we should be saved. You agree that no mother should have to lose their child to over-policing or to someone who is discharging a gun. You, mm -hmm. We agree on many things. The 10% that we don't agree on, then listen, let's debate that. But there's there's ninety percent of the stuff we agree that black. All right, that's enough of this clown. Look here, man. 
That man ain't talking about moving people for population. I told you New York and all these cities losing population. He talking about filling them in with immigrants and getting them to work. Mm. Fix the damn policies, man. Don't worry about man, that's a crazy stuff, man. But see, this dude is a honestly, man. Um He's a snake oil salesman. I just think you know, you gotta, you gotta, he gotta do, he, you know, he gotta be slick like that for for Bloomberg and the Democrats, you know, for the liberals, man. Um, y'all notice too, these cats be bringing up race and all that. That shit is too late. That shit gets kind of old. Um, you know, take accountability, you're grown ass man. You know what I mean? You, should, you know, you the one that was cool with that policy. That's on you. You was okay with that. You know what I'm saying? You was okay with uh making this a single Are choice. You sick and of in a, in a time like this, you make this a sanctuary. So you do all this at a time like this. When the house, look, look at the, the New York housing crisis. Look, it says 80% of people that rent in New York, you know what I'm saying, can't even afford it. Everything is high. The taxes is high. You see what I'm saying? And then, you know what I'm saying, to try to combat that and the, this inflation, you see what I'm saying? They want to go with the higher tax route. It's, you know just, it's just a mess. You know what? It's a mess. It's my answer. It's mighty interesting he said that though about getting these migrants to work though because Trump just I think Trump had a rally yesterday today tonight and he exposed the fact that you got um they giving uh mag uh, immigrants uh what is it uh voter registration forms they can vote with no ID in Texas and Arizona but well, they're trying to get them to set it up like that that's what they're trying to do. Well, so I thought Texas. Was... <coughs> I thought Abby wasn't having that in Texas, man. But you gotta understand this. Texas got got a few blue districts, so it oh, could yeah. happen in certain areas. That's like what we were talking about the other day. They they, they hit these, you know what I'm saying? These Republican states, you know what I mean? Locality, a locality, they, a locality may try. They, you know, they hit the Republican states. You know what I mean? They they, they make pockets of them blue, oh. or pockets of them already be blue. So what they'll do is. Like you were saying, bring these migrants into those blue pockets. You see what I'm saying? Flood those pockets up, get the get the numbers up. You know what I mean? And then get it to where they can vote. Get it to where they can. You know. I mean, honestly, but see the thing is, like I say, man, we need to come together, man, and just shut this shit down, man. That January 6th shit was fake. We needed a real something real like that. Every I think every, you know what I'm saying, every state, certain amount of people from every state need to go to their state legislator. You know what I mean? City halls and all that, and just demand this shit needs to stop, or else we ain't paying no more taxes. You know what I'm saying? What happens when one person at the job is trying to, you know, rebel or whatever? And one person at the job is trying to stand up, and the rest of them ain't backing him up. He look like he looking like a fool. You know, and no, we, if we don't have the numbers, man. Right there, right there, right there, because you you brought up jobs and all that. So let's stay right there. I'm coming to you now. That was that was just, I was just finishing the interview. I'm coming to Frank now. This Frank state. Workers across our state getting a big raise starting today. Their minimum wage going up to twenty dollars an hour. Some franchise owners warn, though, the increase will lead to higher prices for customers. Kate Tilly's Eric Spillman live this morning in Santa Monica with the story for us. Eric, good morning. <coughs> good morning, Jessica. I got my sausage McMuffin combo meal here at McDonald's this morning. Comes with the sausage. McMuffin, hash browns, and if you get it with a large coffee, you know how much that costs? How about $9.59? That seems higher than I remember, but it could be just the beginning because starting today, uh, fast food workers in California will be making 20 bucks an hour, and uh, it's going to mean that consumers are going to be paying more for their food items when they come to the restaurants. All right, let's talk about this. This is all because of a new law, AB 1228, which was passed, passed by the legislature last year. It applies to all fast food restaurants in California with more than 60 locations nationwide. Fast food workers and their advocates say it's about time they got more money. They say most fast food employees are adults, many with families to support, and some live below the poverty line. Now, initially, a trade association representing fast food franchise owners made a deal with labor unions. They agreed on this new law with its wage increase as a compromise. But now some of the folks who own fast food restaurants are complaining that these higher labor costs are really going to hurt. They say they're going to hire fewer employees to save money. And chains like Starbucks, McDonald's, KFC, Subway and Pizza Hut are all promising they will have to increase 
the prices on their menus. We've been talking to fast food customers this morning, and we've been asking them, do you mind paying more if it means that the people preparing the food are getting a higher wage? Do you think that's good? That's good. Cost of living is, went up so high, and people are losing their homes. That's why we have so many homeless. People can't afford working at McDonald's, making minimum wage, and they can't afford the rent. You know, they live check to check, you know, and it's it's hard. I, I think that's great. But they have to make the menu prices higher for the consumer. Well, everything's going higher, you know, and what's going to happen that they're going to cut down on the staff and uh, they might even lose customers. People don't want to wait a long time. They want to get their stuff and go. You know, everybody's on the go, you know. Well, they're already cutting down on staff. If you've been to a McDonald's lately, you know they're already using more automation. At this McDonald's, there are three or four automated kiosks in the front of the restaurant and only one employee taking your order. So if you want to order quickly, it's almost like they're forcing you to go to the touch screen. It's not just happening at fast food restaurants. It's happening at supermarkets and other stores as well. I guess that's the way of the world. Uh -huh. this, this happened right after the pandemic, though. Notice that? Uh, right around that pandemic time when we was inside, it was motherfuckers was building their stores. <laughs> Like 19 means like, 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 like this is new. This shit happened like four years. This been happening like four years ago, even longer than that. That kiosk, I've been seeing that kiosk one, nine. for a while. One nine. One is a nine is I. A I. And see, the thing is, the guy. Check what you think. Guy, oh, my man. I don't know, Shaq going. He might be sleepy or something. Shaq, get in. Ding ding. <laughs> I think the I think the guy meant well, man. Yeah, Shaq, Shaq. What up, what up? What's up, Wizard Mike? What's the word, dog? What you think about? Sound like you stretch. What you think about stretching out like a motherfucker? Fast food. Oh me? Yeah, sound like you were stretching out like a motherfucker. Oh man, boy, I've been there reclining, but that one was blur. There you Frank, why getting that recliner boy and be on relax mode. <laughs> so what you what y'all think, man? About this, what you think about this fast food law? They're increasing the food price and things like that. Shit. What do you think about that, man? I told you why they're doing it. Yeah, for automation. Because they even brought all this. They done brought all these immigrants in, man. So they, they, you know, they don't, they ain't used to that fast food restaurant. So they gonna pay the money, dude. Y'all didn't know that. Good point too. Yeah, they gonna pay the money because they not used to fast food. Like Google and see how many restaurants is in the United States of America. Man. So this is we had to do field research, like because uh, people think we just be talking when we when we speak on stuff like that. So just try to Google. And see how many fast food restaurants is in the United States alone. Mm. Mm. <clears throat> let's see. So let's let's do this. Yeah, yeah, let's do it live. Let's, That's how you... No, 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 I ain't. I, I, I'm, I'm talking about like. Let's, let's let's play. I got one more video to play. This, this is in Frank State, but they're not telling you that they also are uh, Pizza Hut. I think it's Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut is one of them. I, I know Pizza Hut say they're cutting their drive delivery drivers, but they're gonna use they're gonna bypass that by using Uber Eats and other delivery companies, DoorDash, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Right. Yeah, a lot so, of them convert to uh, Uber Eats. Yeah. Uh, so that's DoorDash. That's a that's a that's a way to undercut too. That's a smart well smart on company for it. Oh, that's it. TurboTax Live full service takes taxes off your plate without putting more work on your shoulders. Hey, and Scott, why don't you just tell us what it's meant from your perspective? Well, good morning, Becky. Thank you for having me. Uh, the day has now dawned upon us where countless operators in California face this $20 wage. It impacts 15,000 restaurants up and down the state of California. 
it's going to be the most serious challenge for entrepreneurs that do business on the franchising platform. The vast majority of these restaurants run by small business proprietors who do business on the franchising platform. And the vast majority. Shaq, there are 200,859 fast food restaurant business in the U.S. as of 2023. Being family owned and operated just like my, my restaurants. You know, I, I, I want to underscore the, the words family owned because franchisees are not large global corporations. The restaurant brands that we franchise uh, might be national in name, but franchisees are local business operators. It's an important fact that somehow it seems to get lost in the legislation that was crafted. And as you stated earlier regarding, it is absolutely the intent and consequences. And for many, what makes this legislation unprecedented, let alone extraordinary, is that it only benefits employees who work in franchise restaurants. Uh, whether you own one single donut shop or 10 donut shops in California, if you're part of a franchise brand with 60 or more locations, the new wage mandate is going to apply to you. And, and as you just stated, this is an extraordinary wage jump, 25% overnight. It's a serious concern for two reasons. First, it targets only fast food restaurants. And second, the sheer scale of the impact is just breathtaking. Um, historically, as you said about steps, step laddered approach, you know, many cities have studied and put forth living wages with annual CPI bumps. Certainly the, the city that I opened my first McDonald's in, San Francisco is one great example of that. They chose a fair living wage, they set a annual CPI cap, and it allows us to plan for that as small business owners. It's fair to the employees, and it's fair to people who create the jobs. We've already heard that mm -hmm. some pizza delivery stores, for instance, have, have uh, laid off or gotten rid of a thousand jobs more ahead of this, that they're just not going to do that anymore. They'll use the Uber and Lyft uh, apps to go ahead and have deliveries done that way. Uber and Lyft don't have to abide by that because their employees are not employees, they're contractors. You, you look at these workarounds that kind of happen with this. What are you doing in preparation? Are you going to lay people off or are you going to find other ways to make up and, and make good for that 25% increase in wages? Well, obviously my team is focusing on every possible action to survive and maybe even thrive in the tumult that's gonna start today. Uh, obviously one of the most critical levers that you know I can use as a business owner is price, but I certainly can't charge $20 for a Happy Meal. So I have got to be aggressive in seeking labor efficiencies to drive the top line. I've got to accelerate the digital channels even more. I've got to promote more off-premise delivery. Families are going to have to make very hard choices around capital X expenditures, for example. Can I postpone updating a restaurant dining room? Can I put off investing in a new rooftop HVAC? And even the bigger question, should I open a new restaurant in California against these extraordinary legislative headwinds. Uh, the topic of the day seems to focus on the obvious move to cut labor or reduce staff size. But frankly, at least in my organization, that's the last thing I want to do. People in my company, and it's been this way for 30 years, are my greatest single asset. So the last thing I, I want to do is impact the folks that run my golden arches. But as you pointed out, even leading up to today, Pizza Hut and, and Round Table Pizza have laid off 1,500 drivers up and down the state. In an area that I do business in, Redding, California, at the end of January, 18 Subway sandwich shops, family-owned, closed overnight. This, this is just a harbinger of things that will come, and, and I am going to do everything I possibly can to not only protect and defend my equity, but to grow my business so that I have jobs to provide the community. Scott, I want to thank you for your perspective today. Scott Rodgers. A lot of things going on there. A lot of things going on there, Frank and Shaq. Damn, man. But see, that makes sense. Look, Uber and Lyft, these motherfuckers are so clever, man. All this shit, all this stuff is connected. The Uber and Lyft is connected, right? So that way, look, you don't need that much uh, 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 delivery people, right? For these for these uh, uh, Pizza Hut and these pizza chains. You see what I'm saying? Um, you know, you, you're not, you know, it's like you, you, it's, it's more, you don't really need no a cashier, nothing helping you out at, the, at the, whatever restaurant you see what I'm saying? Because you ordered that shit on DoorDash or Uber Eats or you see what I'm saying? 
it, it shuts it cuts out a lot of employees if you think about it so they did all that right they did the uber and the lyft however you this, define financial even, success uh, we got it. Look, they're revamping they re-ramp in 2020 uh 20 they re-ramp and did these kiosks right now they're doing these uh uh, uh and then well a lot of these uh, smaller uh restaurant chains a lot of small business closed uh anyway during covid that was the whole point and then now you're doing this whole thing where um you're trying to hike the uh, uh, minimum wage up to the point where a lot of these people don't have no choice but to either close or you see what I'm saying or, or cut down labor, man. Um, that's definitely like when you know when you talk about businesses, it's about profits and losses, man. You see what I'm saying? Those two things, you know. And uh, I could tell you, well, I mean, it, it, it ain't good for the. It's not good for the consumer, or it ain't good for the business people. Mm. But some of them, some of them restaurants, some of them restaurant, uh, restaurants are franchise owned. You see what I'm saying? Meaning, you know what I mean? They're owned by different uh, entities, different people, but it's still the same chain. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah, shit is crazy, man. Well, listen to this. Five twenty-four. Now it is breakfast time. Let me take you on a little item. And now you can enjoy it with a Krispy Kreme donut. Mmm, sounds good, right? The two retailers are now joining forces. Three types of donuts will go on sale at McDonald's restaurants later this mm. year. The original glaze, the ch chocolate ice with sprinkles, and chocolate ice cream filled donuts. This fast food alliance started as a test run at 160 restaurants in Kentucky. Now a phase rollout will start later this year. It's going to allow the customer to buy them individually or you can even get a six pack starting at breakfast time there at mcdonald's you know sometimes you just want two different restaurants but you don't want to make two different mm -hmm. stops right mm -hmm. booyah yeah okay. dessert dessert for breakfast your forehead is wrinkled well, what are you thinking about uh, this combo? mr health yeah yeah probably no <laughs> now yeah. if they have granola and kale he's in yeah, I get some of that. You know, team up, but not with the Krispy Kreme. <laughs> team up with like no. kill me crazy or something. You know, get get some you know health options. Okay. Balance it out. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Right? I mean, if you're all right, Shaq, this is what you said. All these mega corporations are gonna merge up one day, Shaq. You said they they they, they playing Monopoly games with us, Shaq. Well, didn't you say that? Well, that look like Krispy Kreme and McDonald's merging together. Well, of course, you're going to start seeing these, these super mergers and these super, uh, you know, because that's the name of the game, Monopoly, man. You know? Mm. I thought they said Monopolies were illegal. Mm. Who? I thought they said Monopoly was illegal. <laughs> yeah, for you to do it. Yeah, for when you yeah, if you try to do it, of course. You know what I mean, oh, oh, that's what it is. I wonder because I'm about to say I know that this can. Oh, who the hell want damn burgers and donuts anyway? Had man, that's some crazy stuff they got going. That stuff don't even go together, man. Don't go together. Hmm. Hey, Hillsborough County, Hillsborough County, does not go together. Might be bad for you, but it damn sure tastes good. Does it? Some will say, you know. I ain't eat a Krispy Kreme probably, probably since 2020, probably 2000 or something. Probably 2000. Probably 04. Yeah, that's the all that is, is a bunch of sugar. All, all it is is a bunch of sugar. Yeah. All right, Jack. Are y'all ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for a state of emergency, brother? If you owe back taxes, I have great news. Here's what the IRS doesn't want you to know. The IRS.
already been approved, huh? For children 16 to 9, 9 to 16. Go. Puerto Rico has declared a state of emergency for dang fever. Dang. Mm. Ain't that something? Remind me of something that happened in 2020, Shaq. Mm. Public emergency. 549 cases. Who's counting? Mm. It ain't nothing like deja vu, brother. That shit is crazy, man. You say it's crazy, ain't it, man? I just, I don't know, man. I just, you know, are we gonna ever get tired of these uh, these people like ruling over us, man? It's just like it's crazy, man. But I think they give us a phone, they give you a TV, they. Give you an apartment, wherever the fuck, a car and shit, and then they give you the perception that you're you're independent and you, you know what I'm saying? It's like that's crazy, man. You know what I'm saying? When in, you know in rea actual reality, you see what I'm saying? Ain't nothing moving without the uh, government. You know what I mean? Making it move. That's crazy. Hmm. You said the government ain't moving, huh? Yeah, they, you know, ain't nothing moving, but, you know, until they, they say so, you know what I mean? And it's crazy, man. Um, we not we need to get together, man, or, you know what I'm saying? The revolution should not be televised. If, if we're going to do something, definitely not say nothing on no social media or no internet, because who the hell you think made social media? You know what I'm saying? Who do you think made Facebook off? Uh, or whatever, what's dude's name? Uh, uh, Zuckerberg, whatever. That dude's probably CIA, dude. You know what I'm saying? I think a lot of these, what's the name of the CIA? A lot of these little websites and, and, and meta to be and all free this and flexible and creative was you really I mean? essential to what I wanted to make, mm. and I didn't find a platform that did that. At New at ten, hundreds of people marched downtown today for the Transgender Day of Visibility Rally. It was happening earlier. Organizers say in the last few years, attacks on the LGBTQIA plus community has had an impact on their mental and physical health. They say. Less than half the population in the U.S. has never met or seen a trans person. That's why they wanted to rally today. This year's theme was Unleash Your Inner Wings. They invited trans, non-binary, gender non-conforming folk and their allies to march. It knew it. Oh, hundreds of people march downtown today. Hold it, hold it, hold it. They say most people ain't never seen no trans person. So why you want me to see you then? Stay your ass away mm. then. Stay out of here, man. Get the fuck out of here, man. I mean, and let me take this. I ain't probably ain't seen no real, but well, one or two real ones. You ain't seeing them if you had the surgery, I can guarantee. Mm. So they said they want to be recognized, huh? Shaq, they want to be recognized. Mm. Who they are? They want to flap their wings. <laughs> you know, I'm sitting there saying to myself, Frank, what do you think about Biden? This thing where they call it, what do they call it? Transgender Day of Visibility. 
That's crazy. Club of Rome unveils plan to cool billions from the world population. The Club of Rome has put out its plan, right? Mm, Rome. You heard about them before. But see, they're really trying to like make people conform, huh? I mean, of course, man. That's the game. Um, that's always the game. I'm trying to find this thing. Oh yeah, I got it. I know what it is. I know what I got. I know what I got. I know what it is. Before I, yeah, I got it. I I I, 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 I forgot what to tell you about this. Okay, here it is, Frank. This is what happened. They said yesterday in Gaza. China concerns over military escalation in the Middle East after an airstrike that killed several senior Iranian commanders. Iran blames Israel for the attack. Foreign correspondent Rip Brick Planet is tracking the latest from Tel Aviv. Good morning, Brick. Good morning, George. Yeah, as Iran vows to retaliate for an attack on its consulate in Syria, Israel has expressed its sincere sorrow after seven aid workers were killed delivering food into Gaza. This morning, seven aid workers, including a dual U.S. Canadian citizen, killed while delivering desperately needed aid in northern Gaza. In the aftermath of the Israeli airstrike on their vehicle, gruesome video showing the bodies of some of the victims, which include Polish, British, Australian and Palestinian citizens. The World Central Kitchen now saying it is pausing Gaza operations following the attack on its workers. This as regional tensions escalate. Iran vowing revenge after an airstrike in Syria killed two of its top commanders and five officers. Iran and Syria blaming Israel for the attack, though Israel has yet to comment. The strike reportedly six missiles from Israeli warplanes leveling a multi-story building just next to the Iranian embassy in Damascus. The Iranian ambassador in Syria saying such crimes and violating international law will have its response in an appropriate time. The attack comes as Israel has intensified strikes on Iranian military targets and Iran's allies in the region since the start of Israel's war with Hamas. Meanwhile, in talks with the U.S. over Israel's planned invasion of Gaza's southernmost city of Rafah, Israel agreeing to take into account U.S. concerns over civilian casualties. All right, Frank. I mean, I thought they I was having a ceasefire. I thought, they, had, I, I, thought, I thought they they voted on a ceasefire a couple like a week ago, a couple weeks ago. Man, that's some these motherfuckers is full of shit, man. You know what I'm saying? Well, that, that, you know, well, I mean, I know that doesn't actually go into effect because they voted on it, but it's like, what are they doing? No, that was just to get you to get you um to get people to shut up. Well, yeah. Benjamin and y'all would say they still keep going doing what they're doing. But see, but this is all about money. Got, it's money. It's money. You see Biden, I'm talking about we disapprove with Benjamin now. Yeah, I know all that, right? That's all mm. game, Frank. I well, know. All, all you got to do to stop that is cut the money off. Mm. Oh, yeah. I know. Oh, some over there. Cut the money off every on every aspect, man. Cut the money off. Mm. Yeah, yeah, Biden is full of shit. Biden is full of shit, man. He that's why we it's you know and it's a lot of people are doing man. man. And see why they and then they, now they strike going in Iran. Where's the pro, or striking parts in Syria where Iranian people and all this shit? How did they know? So how did they even know that these people are from so-called Hamas? Wink, wink. How did they even know, motherfucking know that they're in in Syria right now? How did they? Where's the intelligence? Who who's giving them this information? Let me tell you that, man. Let's say this, man. Let's forget all that Hamas crap. We keep on. We know Hamas was made fun of by Israel. Right. Hamas ain't no different than ISIS. The U.S. government created all that. Nothing. This CIA groups and all this bullshit. Okay. okay? Period. 
Now they say they got an anthrax outbreak or something going on again. I said, what the hell is going on out here, man? I'm like, come on, man. Here we go with this bullshit. Uh, reminds, don't it remind you, don't you remind, doesn't it remind you of uh, when Bush was in office, uh, when uh, Bush was in office, dude? See, they, it's like, I see what they're doing, man. It's like history. Oh, I guess this is what they meant by history repeats itself. But it's more distractions, man, more things to keep you uh, your mind focused, uh, uh, distracted by. Um, you know, just like the puff that puffy well, thing, all this. I told shit. you a guy. Mm-hmm. I, told, I told a guy about it. He said, yeah. I said, what are you talking about? He said, he said, man, Biden got to do something about it. I told him straight up. What you mean you got to do something about it? He said, the innocent people shouldn't be getting killed. I said, well, all you got to do is cut the damn money off. Oh, that's how you stop it. You ain't gotta, really? I said, well, I don't know what you're talking about. What are you talking about? Oh, cut the money off, stop giving the weapons. That's all you got to do. Very simple process. Mm. And see, see, how does how does America look funding that? America looks just as guilty, dude. No. This is crazy. What they say? And you know what's weird? Look, you know what's weird? What you, know how people, how, how, you know how people are, are desensitizing full of shit? Because you got these Palestinian people, uh, some of these Israeli people protesting out here. Why are you protest you protesting against the war? Why are you not protesting against the U.S. for funding these motherfuckers, bro? That's what I said. So you're still in the United States. Get the fuck up out of here, then. Bounce. I wouldn't stay at a place like that. <laughs> the fuck? You, you got so a you, point. See now. Let's get to the real deal now. Mm-hmm. I want. I want to break something down, man. Right? You gotta mm-hmm. understand something. Now. Pay, pay attention, Frank. Because you got a two part problem here. Mm-hmm. You got people like I showed you that rabbi last night that's for what they're doing. Don't let that rabbi fool you that I should play like that. He for what they're doing now. Okay? He definitely for it. Don't believe in that. But you got some people that are out there protesting that's trying to get regular people who may be protesting, regular Palestinians or people. It's just out there just saying we don't agree with the government doing, right? As time goes on, they may have some people start attacking cops, et cetera, law enforcement politicians, right? And that's going to allow them to lock up people who may not be involved. Because you know you got, you know when you had these protesters things going, you, you get these, these agents in there, these protesters, these show testers in there. Ooh, so gotta, that's right. Right. You gotta be real careful with this situation about this protest in Palestine and things like that. Like I said, you're right. You need to tell the US government to stop funding this stuff. You're exactly right. But you also gotta watch the people who are gonna be out there protesting because they tell them Palestine protesting. Them people talking on the front line, I'm really doubting Shaq. Maybe a few of them that's unsuspected. But people that really know what's going on ain't getting on camera talking to the media and putting their face out there. These might be the counter protesters that they throwing out, out there to talk to the media. Because if you that mad about something, you ain't got time to be doing no daggone talking. Just let you know. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And we're not talking about no genocide. That's off limits, bro. I'm just letting you know, it's a lot of hanky panky going on in here. Oh yeah, oh yeah, like a mug. But I will say, for this to happen, right after so-called Easter, right? I'll show you what I say, what I always say, Frank. They wag the dog all the time. See, but I'm gonna tell you what they about to do. They got to get off this Palestinian thing. You know why? They might even come in. Now, look, Frank, I'm going to tell you, I got a sneakers for They might say, they might come, it might come out and lie and say, we called off the war. Or we, we stopped. We, we're not dealing with nothing Yahoo no more, right? They're going to end up taking this shit off the media cycle because it's getting too much pushback. Ooh. That don't mean that's still going on now. Notice I mm. notice I say it's still going on. Mm. So you know how they you know how they you know how they Frank. All they gotta do is stop talking about it. And when they start talking uh, about ooh. it, 
It's like how what's name said, "Yeah, you stop racism and stop, stop, I stop talking about it," which kind of don't make no sense. But yeah, this, this right here, what you're saying, that makes perfect sense. Stop. See, and the thing is, how do you even now? I'm starting to think. You know, what I'm saying some of this stuff might be scripted too, in a way, because just like the Puff Daddy thing, no, he's not in jail. The dude is not in jail. They didn't even question him. But yet, you still have <laughs> hit piece by hit piece by hit piece, different things hey, talking about this shit. Still talking about this shit. You know, different people talking about they the witness and they this and that. And they come up, different people coming out saying that they, this is just a shit show. It's just all a distraction. Recordings. Look, look, if they was really serious, if this is a real look, EJ, hey, it's this is a real case, I'm so excited to announce that. that local arrested right now, they would at least, they didn't question Why do they? Mm. How you not question him? You go to you raid his house, but you don't question him. Okay, makes sense. Makes sense. Now, this is about now. Now, remember I said the problem I had with Trump that he supported Israel too. He's full of shit. Because shouldn't no politics be supporting? No, first of all, Israel ain't Israel. Mm. Israel ain't a state. Israel only made in 1948. Mm. But he did make a comment that said he think that they hate Israel. I don't think they hate him. I think they hate Israel. Could be. The Democrats hate Bibi Netanyahu. I actually think they hate Israel. Yes. I don't think they hate him. I think they hate Israel. When you see those Palestinian uh marches even i i'm amazed at how many people are in those marches and guys like schumer see that and to him it's votes i think it's votes more than anything else because he was always pro-israel he's very anti-israel now any jewish person that votes for democrats uh hates their religion they hate everything about israel and they should be ashamed of themselves let's bring it right now the CEO of the Anti-Defamation League, That's Jonathan Greenblatt, true. and also is former it, reporter for the Wall Street Journal, Matt Greenblatt. I mean, he's not a politician. Greenblatt right? played whatever side of the aisle he want to play. But I will say this. Trump and the Democrats both support Israel. This is a politician thing. That's why I said it's, it would be hard pressed to vote for any of these people knowing that they support Israel. Mm, but see, that's why I don't understand it's why people right. I don't know. I don't understand why there's something called a Trump train. And all these black people want to get up. Look, this motherfucker's full of shit too, bro. He don't got no policies for us, and he's for Israel. That's another. That's two. Where's the, the three strikes you out? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you. I can't. I ain't. I ain't do. You supporting them clown shows? You notice. But, you notice. You notice Angela Stanton. You notice Angela Stanton's not pushing for him no more. Beat that. Interesting, right? I really did. Yeah, I read it. Matthew Brzezinski, who has a guest essay for MSNBC titled The American Jewish Community Must See Through Netanyahu Cynicism. Jonathan, we have so much, uh, so much uh, to, to talk to you about. I'm so glad you're here. I'd like you to do two things here. One, respond to what Donald Trump said about how Jews who vote for Democrats are bad Jews and hate their religion. And two, I need you to counsel, counsel Donnie. I need you to help Donnie through. And I'm serious because Donnie, like a lot of American Jews, are really twisted up right now. Obviously, we talked about the pain uh, and the heartache and, and, and just the fear after October 7th. Right now, uh, a lot of a lot of Jewish Americans are grappling with, with other feelings, mixed feelings about Netanyahu, what they're seeing on the front pages of the newspaper, how to sort through it all. What, what are your thoughts? So there's a lot there. Um, let me try to break it down. So first, with respect to what President Trump said, obviously, it's patently false and prejudicial. It is bigotry to say that Jews hate Israel if they vote for the Democratic Party. I don't need President Trump or any politician to lecture me on how I am supposed to vote. And the, Israel has been a bipartisan concern 
for decades and decades and decades. There's been consensus on supporting the Jewish state because it's a democracy, because it's our best ally in the Middle East, because it's committed to the same kind of values that America is committed to. And so for that reason, again, Democrats and Republicans have been good on Israel. But look, the person who dines with Nick Fuentes... You know, it's kind of calling the kettle black to tell us what's anti-Semitic or not. I mean, really. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, give me a break. <laughs> really? But, but to your to your second point, like, I read Matthew's essay about his daughter, and it was painful for me. It's painful to see the spike in anti-Semitic attitudes in the United States. We just did one of our surveys, Joe, and we found, like, a decade ago, 9% of Americans had intense anti-Semitic attitudes. Today, 10 years later... It's almost 25%. Okay. Where the numbers at, you lying bastard? Where the numbers at? Show me the damn numbers, you lying bastard. And the numbers among young people are even more intense. Typically, there's an Archie Bunker effect. Older people are more prejudiced than younger people. Not now, not when it comes to anti Semitism. But I have to say one thing, and this is maybe for Donnie, because you were trying to bring it back, Donnie, and I appreciated that. And Elise was talking about, you know, the, the, the people being operated on without anesthesia and the pain and the suffering. Let us not forget the 130 hostages being held in tunnels below Gaza, the disabled and the elderly, men and women, innocent people who were raped, tortured, torn from their homes, while their loved ones were murdered alongside of them. And I say this because what makes this different than after 9-11 in Afghanistan. What makes this different than after, you know, the situation in Syria is there are innocent people being held in a tunnel system built by Hamas over two decades that apparently rivals the Paris metro. So again, I want this war to end. Every innocent killed is a disaster. Every civilian who dies, it's a tragedy. But if Hamas returned the hostages today, would end like Is that. So when we though? talk about a ceasefire, uh, we talk about a cessation of violence, when we talk about the young people like Eddie did, let's keep in mind. What, what about the Palestinian prisoners? Wasn't it supposed to be a swap? Why do you only just mention in one slide? All right. But see the thing is man. Hey, you know what I say about him, right? He's just like that fool I played last night, lying bastard. Why this started, and I'm not a military strategist. I don't know how to quote and Hamas, although I agree with the sentiment, but I do know these hostages need to come home now. They have nothing to do with a global conflict and Hamas's homicidal agenda. If you want to end that, start by bringing the hostages home, period. Matthew, in your uh, new piece, you write in part this, quote, American Jews have long identified with the underdog. They rallied to the defense of black Americans during the civil rights movement, often at great personal peril. No, that wasn't a rally. They recently served as key supporters of the Black get. Lives Matter movement. Now Israel's long-term prospects could depend on American Jews taking up the cause of a two-state solution. Difficult as that may be in the aftermath of Hamas's terrorism, the stakes are incredibly high. If Israel continues to follow Netanyahu's disastrous path, Israel risks becoming diplomatically isolated and a pariah state. And I, I've got to say, Matthew, on a more personal level, uh, this, I mean, for you, this is extraordinarily personal for you as a daughter uh, on, on a college campus uh, who is being shouted at for wearing your Star of David. Yes, well, I mean, so my children are Jewish under rabbinical law, but more importantly, they've all decided that they want to identify as Jews culturally. And I wholeheartedly supported that decision. Whoa, 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 and whoa, whoa, unfortunately, whoa, whoa. in the past few months, it's a decision that um, culturally oh, Democrat continues to follow that in the campus. Uh, more importantly, that has led them to be harassed. And uh, hey, wait a minute, man! Yeah, yeah. This guy named Brzezinski. Wait a minute, this guy named Brzezinski. 
This guy got to be related to that guy that trained Obama. Mm. Oh, I mean, yeah, Brzezinski said yes. he's going to kill bad okay. people. I know you're talking about uh, uh, some Brzezinski. I know you're talking about. Joe Scarborough's wife is his daughter. This guy named Brzezinski. He part mm. of that group. Mm. You see how they how they st- how they stage all these. This is stage. Yeah, all this is stage. The interview with him and him and that alarmed me, and so um, I decided uh, to speak out. And I think that um, they're representative of um, you know, as you were saying earlier, the younger generation in this country is is heartbroken by what's going on over there. And uh, Netanyahu has reputationally brought Israel to the brink. Sam Stein, uh, do you have a question for Jonathan Greenblatt? Yeah, I mean, Jonathan, I, I hear you and I understand uh, exactly where you're coming from. I think uh, many Jews feel like Trump's attack on dual loyalty is prejudicial. And I also understand where you're coming from on uh, how you want to see this war ended. I, I, I wonder, though, when you look at the Netanyahu government, uh, does part of you fear at all uh, what he's doing to uh, Jews not in Israel, uh, that, he, that his actions have isolated uh, Israel, but also uh, sparked a wave of anti-Semitism? And I don't mean that to blame Jews for a spike of anti-Semitism, but I do think that the two are interrelated. And I'm curious if you have thought about that and if you uh, uh, feel angst at how this Israeli government has prosecuted this war. Look, <clears throat> I feel like all the time, I think. I think that's part of the Jewish condition, Sam. Yes, fair enough. But uh, what I will tell you is that n- there's no question uh, Bibi Netanyahu is certainly not my favorite politician, right? And I have criticized him, and I have criticized the policies of his government. But the fact of the matter, and you just said something that I want to draw on, I don't like blaming the victim. In the year 2022, when uh, Naftali Bennett was the prime minister, when they had an Arab Muslim in the coalition, the most diverse leadership coalition in Israel's 75-year history, we had here in America, Sam, the highest number of anti-Semitic incidents we'd ever tracked until that time. So again, a liberal democracy with a multicultural, multi-political coalition and yet still anti-Semitism was raging here in the United States. And now I'm sure the numbers are going to be far worse for this year. Spasms of violence in the Middle East often trigger anti-Jewish action here. But did anyone think it was okay when Asian American people were being assaulted, when they were being harassed and victimized oh, because of what oh, Beijing was doing okay, around COVID? Okay, did anyone think, would anyone right think it was okay, Sam, if worshipers right at Russian Orthodox churches were harassed but she is letting me know this is safe. She's like an agent by masked like activists like so, because you know, they're upset about Ukraine. Like, I mean, yeah, that idea is preposterous. Would anyone think it would be okay to vandalize, you know, Panda Express because you're upset about the Uyghur Muslims? Of course, that would be absurd. But somehow it's open season on Jews. In just the past week, modest or two weeks, Modest Yahoo, a Jewish musician, he wasn't allowed to do his concert in Chicago because Chicago PD said they didn't have enough protection. My friend Brett Gelman, uh, an actor and an author, what? his book signings have been canceled in places like people, Los Angeles know this person is. because of protests about Gaza. When American Jews are day. blamed for what's happening in the Middle East, that should worry all of us because we know as Americans, we are a multi-ethnic, multi-racial democracy and it is not okay to hold anyone collectively responsible for things you don't like around the world. But yet when it comes to Jews, we're told, hide your star. David. When it comes to Jews, we're told you need more protection at your synagogue. When it comes to Jews, we're told it's your fault and you need to protect yourselves. I mean, this is nuts. I'll make one last point. After the murder of Jamal Khashoggi by the Saudi government, the protector of the holy places, the embodiment of Islam, would anyone have said it's okay to again stage demonstrations in front of mosques or Islamic centers to ban Romney from doing a show, but that's what's happening here demonstrations now that's to right. Jews, it and it is not okay. That should alarm all of us because this isn't just anti-Semitic, Sam. This is anti-American. 
when a slice of your colleagues and neighbors and friends and family members are being told, hide your identity, squelch your religion, because it's open season on you, but that's what's happening on our college campuses right now. That's what's happening in public places right now. So I'm not disputing wow. the tragedy wow. in Gaza, but I am saying, and protect your Jewish family members and friends with everything you got, because right. this is a moment when it counts. All right. Man, this dude is a man. Wait, hey, look. He you said see college the running there, Frank, don't you? What's that again? You see the play they running, right? Yeah, and then he, uh, I was around a college. lot of college people. When I was up in Baltimore um, last month. Matter of fact, it's actually been a month to the day now. Actually, because <laughs> I left on the third. Um, I didn't hear anybody talk about any Jews, man. I'm just telling you, I didn't hear anybody talk about them. You know, people were doing their own thing, man. We weren't talking about anti-Semitism. I don't know. Maybe he's he's confused or something. I didn't hear that. But nevertheless, it is what it is. I just laugh at this stuff. Um, one more topic to pull up before I get out of here. You know, you know the team North Carolina State is in the championship. They got 150 cases of cancer at that camp. I said that might be a side to talk about. They in the championship game, so you talk about basketball, but a lot of people at campus that got cancer. Mm, yeah, this is just pushing that. Uh, can't, didn't, didn't, they, didn't they come out with a cancer vaccine? I think they say talking about doing it. All right, hold on. Because I got to get to this right quick. I, you know, it's been some mad shootings lately, Frank. There were storms in Ohio. Japan had a seven point. Uh, it was a 7.4 earthquake and on the coast of Tehran. Now I can't find the damn thing. Oh, here it is. I got it. I got it. Here you go. I was looking for this, Frank. No matter what type of severe asthma you have, Suspire can help you have fewer attacks and relieve your asthma symptoms. Well, two people, including a teenager, are dead and seven others injured. This after two mass shootings on Easter Sunday. Mm -hmm. CBS 2's S.L. Razai is live at Chicago Police Headquarters this morning with the very latest on the investigation. Are you kidding me, bro? Are you serious? Yeah, good morning, Dana Ryan. A violence start to Easter on the west side. We know Chicago police are investigating multiple shootings at this time. The latest happening just before 3 o'clock in the afternoon in Austin. You can see police tape evidence markers taking over the intersection there at Ferdinand and Laverne. Chicago police say four people were standing on the sidewalk when a car pulled up. Two people stepped out and opened fire. A 16-year-old was shot in the head and later died at the hospital. Three other men were shot but are expected to recover three, from three other injuries. Men, three? Then another shooting in Austin. This one happening just after one in the morning inside Poppy's mm. chat room. Police say an unknown person opened fire before leaving the scene. One woman, 19 years old, was pronounced dead at the scene. Four other women were shot, two of them under 18, all taken to the hospital, expected to recover. When I found out that it was, everybody was 20 and under. And here we go again. So now we're going to connect and we're going to figure out strategies how we can help kids and bring kids together. And so far, there have been no arrests in either shooting. Chicago police say they're investigating multiple scenes at this time. Reporting live from Chicago Police Headquarters, that's Al Razai, CBS 2 News. Thank you, the man. Didn't I say something not too long ago? Like last week, we was on the show about Chicago shootings. I'm like, watch. Pretty soon, they're going to say some, there's going to be some uh, some shootings in Chicago, too. It, 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 and you notice it's always on a holiday? Why is, it, why do you, why is shootings in Chicago supposed to be always on a holiday? That's kind of weird, isn't it? Mm. You're right. 
Well, see, damn, St. Louis is worse than Chicago. Why did they ever talk about St. Louis like that on the news like that? Interesting, right? Good question. Watch this. A cancer cluster on a college campus has all eyes on one building, which is now shut down. News Nation's Kelly Beeson is live in our newsroom. And Kelly, this is on the campus of North Carolina State. Yeah, you're right, Nicole. So more than 150 former students and faculty at NC State, they've been diagnosed with cancer and other conditions linked to toxins discovered in an academic building there. So dozens of people who worked and took classes in Poe Hall have developed lymphoma, thyroid, and breast cancers. And employee complaints sparked this investigation. Three, leading three different types? To the discovery of toxic PCB no, three chemicals different types, right? inside. The university then closed this hall in November of last year after tests revealed the presence of 38 times the EPA limit of these chemicals. So for background, Nicole, PCBs, they were banned in 1979 due to their potential for causing cancer. They were commonly found in electrical equipment, oil paints, and plastics at the time. The CDC says they can also lead to liver damage, respiratory issues and skin lesions so right now the university is investigating but many former students and faculty are now calling on a state to jump in and investigate this as well nicole uh, absolutely all right kelly thank you thank you for watching go to all right let me break that down man if i go number one i have heard of, i have heard of cancer clusters you i've heard of stuff like that i've heard of stuff like that 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 you know you could develop stuff like that you know in certain places but like you said, this is kind of weird, you know, when you hit, they had three different types, right? Oh, lucky number three again. Oh, uh, you know, you got to be well, careful. Well, well, here's my thing. <laughs> so they got North Carolina State women and men in the NCAA Final Four, mm -hmm. right? This don't happen that often with the women's team and the men's team go, right? Mm -hmm. The woman's team is the number three seed. <laughs> mm -hmm. They're going to be playing, most, I think they're playing the number one seed. They one and three, they're 13. Now watch this. The men's team is the 11th seed, right? And the woman's team is the three. So if you do 11 times three, you got 33. <laughs> mm -hmm. Bars. Hey, Bars. come on, man. <laughs> but by the fact that both teams are, are fighting for a white to win a national championship in women's, men, and college basketball, this story, what I just showed you, can get swept under the rug. Oh, yeah, I can see that. Cause it ain't being important, and they actually told the CDC to stop investigating too. That's another thing. <laughs> Why would you tell them to stop investigating, right? Hey man, it's so serious, like it. Come up my yeah. tracks, you, but don't worry about it, man. It is what it is. Hey, look, I'm just putting the pieces together. Um, so Shaq, you there? Even that. Yeah, there. What's up with? You? I don't know. I was just playing that thing about that cluster outbreak down there at um, North Carolina State. Um, it's kind of funny. They, in that, they they fighting right in that championship, and they got this big cluster outbreak with over 150 cases at the campus of cancer. Of cancer? What position cancer was? They didn't say. They just said a lot, of, a lot of cancer. That's what I'm saying, man. I don't... Three different types. Say it might be coming from the lab. cancer, G. Ain't that an epidemic? It may not be. They told the CDC to stop investigating. That's Why would you crazy. tell them to stop investigating? Damn, that's crazy. Man, because yeah. they probably testing them up out, man. They probably testing them, man. Just like they were doing at UCLA. I mean, with the USC, UCLA. Come on, man. Tuskegee. Come on, dude. Well, this shit don't I'll, stop, man. Well, I played earlier in Puerto Rico. 
in Puerto Rico, they they having a dengue fever outbreak. They say there's gonna be it, it probably gonna be worse between August and December. I don't know how the hell they already know when it'll be a worse. They said they got 549 cases now. I said, dang, these mosquitoes giving out diseases like that. Damn. Okay. But Puerto Rico is like a public health agency. So on that out. But it is what it is. We like to go, so we covered a couple of things. Chemical annihilation. Biological mm -hmm. chemical annihilation, man. Yeah. And, and Green Bless say he don't need Trump to lecture on him on how to vote. But he back on scene. But I want to know why that fucker ain't talking about them them aid workers that got killed over there trying to deliver food to them Palestinians. That bastard ain't gonna talk about that. That's what I'm talking about. No, that's why they want the media to block her because they don't want they don't want no coverage and nobody really covering and giving it, giving it. You know what I'm saying? A different uh, angle, or point of view. There they want their point. Videos, this they they talk, just like old boy. Oh, go ahead. Just, just like oh, old boy with old Ken. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. ain't got no videos. He ain't got. He ain't had no receipts. It's all the shit coming out of his mouth. We supposed to believe him for face value. Nigga, I don't know you. <laughs> I'm not taking shit from you from face value, cracker. Give me the you receipts, so, nigga. And it, you know what's so bad huh? though? You know what's so bad about that guy? The fact that he what's was that? defending another rabbi that that sells sex toys. That's already out of bounds anyway. God damn. Man, he probably the number one buyer. Shit. <laughs> Shit. But, hey, you man. know, I'm just laughing at this shit, baby, because I'm like, yo, but I like Frank, uh, Frank, like I told you that with this thing, that thing would happen in Gaza yesterday when they showed them people, get them, them workers dropping food and getting them aid workers getting killed. I'm letting you know. They are going to, in a couple months, they are going to bury this story. They're going to keep doing what they're doing, but they're going to stop talking about it. And you know why? Because they got to bury the media nar narrative because it's really making people look at the people, look at America and people a different way. But let's be real. I just told you the Club of Rome just released their plans. Uh, they want to kill off billions of the world population. This is a Club of Rome now. I'm getting to the, the, the real guy, the Club of Rome, the Catholics. You didn't play the video? The I don't have it. Where it's on Info Wars. Info. If I play no, Info I'm Wars, talking the video. I'm talking the, I'm talking the video where old boy sent out the public calling all them names, G, and all them dual citizens. The niggas are dual citizens of uh, Israel. You know, I, I got to find that thing because. You know, for some reason, ever since they logged me out of Facebook on this thing, I have not been able to use my Facebook on my laptop. It's kind of interesting. <laughs> have you seen that video yet, Frank? I think I sent it. I don't know if I sent it in the group chat. Which one are you talking about? He talking about the one. Man, it was a dude. I was talking about a dual citizenship. A dude trying to say, trying to say he got dual citizenship? No. He's saying all these. Um, people got dual citizenship. All these countries, like Israel, got dual citizen. They, you can be an Israeli citizen, or, um, a American citizen. You can be a Turkish citizen, American citizen. All this other. That's what we talking about. You know, I heard, yeah, he I was, heard that before. Yeah, he was. He was calling out different, 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 um, different uh, United States, just like like in Congress, people that's in. That was uh, like the heads of Planned Planhood, the heads of some of these corporations and shit in America. But they got dual citizenships and they do. Hey. They caught all them up in there. Hey. Call old girl out there in Minnesota. What's her name? The chick in Minnesota? Um, he called her out. He called he all them out. out. I mean, he was calling all their names. He all I don't like that. Shit bro. The second these secretaries of states and shit like that, at least all them up was just got dual citizenship. Man. Have you ever heard of the word hijacking? Mm. Mm. Hey, That's why I told you. They pump you like you remember Peter Pan? I remember Peter Pan, man. You remember who Peter Pan? It was uh uh what's his name? Just, uh talk about um Robin man, Williams, right? Hook. He was a pirate. Frank, Shaq, these boys are pirates, man. 
Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, Peter Pan was a pirate. Yeah, they were all pirates, duh. <laughs> right, 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 right. They jack hey, hey, Jack, they jacking the ship, man. I want to probably jack the ship with us on that motherfucker. And, and, and guess what? 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 The logo was for the pirate ship was the skull and bones, right? <laughs> you right. <laughs> no. Yo, they got him again. Got you again, man. <laughs> and that shit was a lot of the Caribbean pirates of the Caribbean, so they was Jamaican, right? They was in Jamaica. Yeah. <laughs> probably, well, probably was, yeah, but they probably was more. They probably was. I don't know. They could have been Irish mixed with you know some Caribbeans. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm thinking too. Cause they sat, had they, they got yeah. that Irish, oh, man. British, <laughs> yeah, British and Irish. Hey, hold on, man. Let me pull this shit up, man. Let me pull this shit up. I forgot. Hey yo, chill, man. Do I got that photo, man? Oh my goodness. Come on, that skull and bones is cold, man. They, these motherfuckers don't play, man. Everything's coded, man. Coded messages, man. But see, you know what killed me? Like with that bridge, that bridge thing. What really got me was um was the was the fact that you know it went at it went down this at the same time or the same kind of the same time as the Fern Hollow. You know, the Fern Hollow was uh uh January twenty eighth, and it, it went down. At 1 28 in the morning. That that really that got me right there, dude. That you know what I'm saying? In the 47 years that it was up, you know what I'm saying? It goes down 47 years later, three days later. There you go. There you go. Mr. Crocodile. You like codfish? You do. Oh, Peter, no. <laughs> oh well, that's just how it goes, man. <laughs> no, hey, but hey, look, these people, man. Even like we was talking about with the black girl earlier, man. They they gonna do that little girl like you know what I'm saying? Charge her as an adult, dude. Like that shit is crazy, yeah. man. Prison that's school to prison the pipeline shit like a mother. But see, the thing is, how do you do that? But the other girl wasn't even supposed to be on because she got suspended. She was the bully. This is crazy. She was the aggressor, dude. It's funny when you finish when somebody starts something and you finish it, you're still gonna be in the wrong and shit. Hey man. It's, it's, people gotta stand man. up, man. I mean, the people don't stand up, man. You know what I'm saying? That's what I was saying earlier. We gotta come together. They're gonna vote for uh Crooked Joe or you know what I'm saying? Or fucking goddamn or Trump. Goddamn Trump and shit. You know what I'm saying? Instead of shit that's going on currently, nigga. Mm. You waiting on these niggas, you know what I'm talking about? It's it's waiting for them. Stuff going on. Yeah, you waiting, they ain't, they ain't gonna look. do shit. They're not gonna do shit on their level. Mm. Save. Savior, hey, look, man. You waiting on the Easter Bunny and Savior Complex. Um, the president can't do shit when it comes to family, city, and state. And shit, they, they that's, you got you to work that out. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But, look, but just like how we were saying about Trump earlier, BJ, look, remember, uh, Trump is full of shit because he's pro, he's pro uh, Israel. And he's not, Trump, he went to that black conservative bullshit, wherever that was. He didn't say no agenda that he was gonna set out, did he? And we just like these wouldn't white people to show up. We just we just like motherfuckers be praising these motherfuckers. As long as they show up, it's good. As long as we see these motherfuckers in the flesh, we that's some some that's some savior complex right there. Oh, but that makes sense. But that saved. makes sense because Jesus Christ is supposed to be white, right? <laughs> <laughs> mm, hey, crazy. No, no, wait a minute now. I'm I'm I I I'm, I'm I gotta I gotta go against that because uh Putin, you know, Putin opened up themselves and showed black Jesus and stuff like they that. They were mad and they mad. <laughs> so <laughs> that was funny, man. I said, yo, this, hey, man, you know, when they, oh my God, look, man, I told people, when they start doing shit like that, you know there's some wild shit coming because that shit pissed people off like a motherfucker. I said, I love this shit. I see, you know what? My pop, he, my pop been uh, overseas, right? Germany, all the places. They treat us way different over there than they do over here. And I've heard this before too. Bobby Human, I used to listen to Bobby Human cats like that back in the day. They used to say shit like that. The Vatican has shit in there in, uh, about us in their vault. They Come got on, man. Come black on, man. Madonna, a child. They have a lot of our- Black Madonna, man. Get the fuck out of here, man. Huh? 
Have a, I'm telling you. That, but see, America don't see. America purposely doesn't do that because they have to paint us like the, like the criminals. They have to put us in a bad light. Why would you have stuff like that? So, I mean, they know about it. Why would you have stuff like this or artifacts about like that about us in a good light, yeah. in a positive light, in a savior light? They have to be the savior, yeah. not us. You know, yeah. you know what? Let me tell you something, man. You know, you know how Trump got them. Uh, you know how they say Trump selling them sixty dollars Bibles or something like that. Trying to make money. Okay, but you know, them presidents also got a Quran too. They just ain't got about. They got a Quran too. I'm letting you know. <laughs> We're not. Well, I heard when they, you know, because a lot of them are uh, either Masons or whatever. They had it. They got all three of them motherfuckers. They got the Torah, the Quran, and the motherfucking uh, Bible. But see, yeah. see, these people are full of shit. Yeah. I said, I broke it down yesterday. Remember, these Jews. When I was talking to you on the phone, these are I, the Creed people. They don't really worship the Torah like that. They worship the Babylonian Talmud. Look that up. With that says that you can and can't do. You can mess with little, you know what I'm saying? You can do some foul stuff to little kids with that talent. That is that's cold. Mm. Well, you can. But hey, look, I don't listen. I went, I was trying to get y'all earlier, but you know, I did the thing with another lady. Um, so I just said, you know, I just said you see, I will just do a two in one special. Um, so we're going to go to sleep. I got a lot of moving around doing next couple of days. So, Shaq, go ahead and shout out your information, bro. Yeah, man. You know, you know, I was getting you on Facebook. You know what I'm saying? Facebook, you know what I'm saying? FBI, you know what I'm saying? The FBI, uh, number one platform. Uh, Shaq underscore Edwards, you know what I'm talking about? On Instagram. You know, I'm the gratification. You know what I'm talking about? It's a gratification. Don't forget that. Don't forget that Bishop will be on tomorrow night. He say he say he wanted to bring up a couple points of the show we did last night. You know, he might even bring up that part with Fanny when I played She's a Bad Mama Jamma. Oh, Frank, they was lying Fanny with it. They said, girl, she said she don't need no man. I love my sisters. But you know what? I'm not even mad at her, G, because she she works for the criminal organization. So why y'all want her to do something that the criminal organization ain't, I'm ain't, not. ain't, ain't doing? I won't talk about it. People got mad and try to put her on blast and shit, but I, on, I ain't mad at her. I'm looking at the pastors. Mm. And I, I'm not and I'm not uh certifying what she did or what, what she got going on. But she worked no. for the she worked for the criminal system. Shit. Hey. She's got I'm not the criminal hip hop. I'm just laughing at the pastors. That hey, look, hey Frank. They criminals too. Yeah. I know they are. But Frank, when we were little boys, they told us, "Thou shalt not commit a grouchy. Thou shalt not commit fornication." Hey, <laughs> hey, look, they support the uh, fornication, adultery, mm. um, <laughs> abortion from the pulpit. I said, "Damn, damn, how much change since I was a little boy." Ooh. When I was five or six years old, dang, I, I must mm. be getting old because I don't seen this stuff in one lifetime, and I ain't dead yet. Damn, I'm good, or damn, I'm mm. bad. I don't know what it is. Which one? Hey, man, I just know that I don't see pastors that talked about don't do this, don't have sex till you're married, don't do this. Now it's like, hey, man, you got women coming to church pregnant, man, with two or three children, man. Hey, where the dad? Where, where your husband at? I ain't got one. Mm. Oh. I'm not even even mad about it. I'm just saying this just show you how much it changed in a 20 year span for me. Oh, feminism. Don't you don't stop quoting the Godfather. No, I'm good. Don't worry about it. Matter of fact, next year, next year I do we gotta play a clip of the Godfather, by the way. Um <laughs> You know, Crip Secure had Crip Secure had a good one about uh oh the hair wig she had, thing. She had his mom's talking about oh um, yeah 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 son, my baby son. Deadbeat. It's like damn who who raised the motherfucker man? Yeah, you call this motherfucker deadbeat. See 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 we don't respect 
see, the, a lot of times women in the family do not respect the men, men in the family. That's your son, and you don't have no respect for him because look at how you're talking about him on a public platform. And you're talking about he's a drug addict and shit. Well, get him some help to take his ass to his ass to rehab. I mean, I, I don't know. The Afro might, might have not have fell too far from the street because he on drugs. You never dibble dabbled. Right? You know what I'm saying? I don't know, man. I mean, this that's another thing, too, with these families. You know what, man? Families, you know what, man? man? Function, look, function. Shout out, look, this is what I want you to do. Go ahead and shout out your information, right? You go ahead and shout it out. And I'm gonna play that video of the crystal cue, and then I'm gonna, after that I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna disperse. But go ahead, man. Go ahead, shout your amazing. Cause I, cause I, I, you know, I've been thinking about that, that, that video, man. Thank you for reminding me about it, man. All right, man. Salute, y'all. You know what I mean? We got, like I said, we got to come together, man, and, and combat this BS, man. Um, tr neither Trump or Biden, you know what I mean, is gonna do nothing for you. You gotta do something for you. The migrants, those are the only ones, you know what I'm saying, that could uh, get patted on the ass and, uh, you know what I'm saying, get shit handed to them, you know, not you. So, um, yeah, man, so XX, Frank Nitty XX on YouTube, man, on Facebook. I mean, excuse me. Oh, yeah, Facebook, Frank Nevermind Jones on uh, uh, XX, Frank Nitty XX again on Instagram and then Frank Jones 8115 on Instagram. Y'all like, comment, subscribe to the channel, man. Uh, hit me up on Instagram. Let me know what's good. And uh y'all got we gotta continue breaking, to stay sucker free, you know what I mean? Breaking news, breaking news. Uh, um bridge in Philadelphia is closed due to repairs. They, they said they're repairing the bridge. So just letting you know. <laughs> hey there, my Crimsonites, and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel. I'm your hostess, femininity coach, and author of the Crimson Cure, and this is my perspective. So we got a short clip here that I'm going to play and I find it to be very interesting. I think you'll find it to be interesting as well, especially some of the commentary. This is a short, so I may play it twice just so you can be sure to uh, understand what's being said and what's going on. So here we go. Shout out to the Do Better podcast. Let me get this straight. My son ain't got no car, no job, no house. He's on drugs, and I'm raising his baby. Say, you want to date him because he's cute? Oof, baby. You're a special kind of stupid, aren't you? I'm just saying. I mean, she makes some valid points, but I think her and a lot of other single moms lack a lot of self-awareness. She doesn't realize that her son's horrible dating attributes are a result of her bad parenting or lack thereof. I'm not just trying to call you out, just calling it a buck. And she probably doesn't even realize this isn't the flex that you think it is. Let me get this straight. My son ain't got no car, no job, no house. He's on drugs, and I'm raising his baby. Say, you want to date him because he's cute? Oof, baby. You're a special kind of stupid, aren't you? I'm just saying. I mean, she makes. Now, I went ahead and uh, let, let that clip play twice because the people in the comments. We're saying it's not always down to parenting um, why your kids turn out bad. And there's some truth to that. It, it isn't always 100% parents' fault if because when, when your kids grow up and they become grown, they make their own decisions. With that being said, here's the issue. The reason why we know that her parenting has something to do with the way this boy turned out is because... She, it seems like from what from this small clip that she's enabling him also. She said he doesn't have a house, doesn't have a job, hasn't doesn't have a car. He's on drugs. Now we don't know how deep that, that goes, right? And she's raising his kids. So does he live with you? And if he lives with you with his children, while he's on drugs and while he's in this state, are you enabling him? Are you enabling him? Because that's what, if you're enabling this behavior, it has been your parenting. Because I don't think people understand that enabling people in their bad behavior and in their bad decisions accountability falls on you for that enablers 
in the middle of that don't seem to understand the detriment. They think they're helping, but the reality is you're not helping that person out of the situation. You're actually helping them to continue to make bad decisions and continue to be in a state where they don't have to make the right decisions because you're there as a safety net for them. So when they mess up, if he goes out here and has another kid in his condition without, without being able to take care of them, without being in a position to be a father and things of that nature, he knows his mom is going to raise his kids. Even if he's not in the house with her, he knows that he can go out there, do what he do, don't have to be responsible for it and bring his children to his mother and her concern over her grandchildren and not wanting to see them out bad will make her take care of them. Now, on the one hand, the grandchildren shouldn't suffer because they didn't ask for this situation. But on the other hand, if you can continue to be his safety net, i.e. enable the bad decisions that he's out there doing, then he's not going to stop doing them. He's not going to stop because he's going to, he's going to have to realize at some point that if I make my bed hard, I'm actually going to have to lay in it and nobody's going to rescue me from my bad decisions, from the bad outcomes that I am engaging in and bringing about. Because we already know, we already know these chicks out here are, they are not being careful with their wombs. They see a dude, they see he handsome, this, that, and the third. They going to let him shoot the club up. Knowing full and well, he got kids and baby mamas <laughs> and all that type of stuff. Before they came on the scene, he's not in any position to be taking care of them and all of that type of stuff. And these chicks are lay up with this dude and have a baby by him. And that's the next point that I want to make because while we can say that her parenting has been key to how this boy turned out, she does make a good point because there will be plenty of young women that will see this boy, depending on how, what he looked like or whatever, they will see him. They will have sex with him they will try to be in a little situation ship with him or whatever seeing his condition seeing that he is just he's just not cut out for this at all and they'll have a baby by him and then they'll go somewhere else and call him a deadbeat they'll go somewhere else and 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 cry victim about how he doesn't take care of the kids and he doesn't pay child support and he's a bum and he broke and he this and he that. When you knew that beforehand, you and that's what I wanted to get to. That's it. But like she's right, a lot of people know what's going on beforehand, but they just do it. So it is what it is, you know. Um, unfortunately, that's how it goes, right? We in the world. What do you think, Frank? Damn. Uh, she's right. I see. You know, I'm kind of like, you know, like, even in my uh, situation, you know, other people's situations, I'm kind of seeing is in my fa certain families, it's just situation too. It's just like, that's the same. It's, I see that, um, you know, as an adult, you're responsible, you know what I'm saying, for the decisions you make. But at the same time, the upbringing, like when your moms are, Dad or whoever uh, raised you, you the that mold. That's like the mold. You know what I'm saying? It uh, mold you. You feel what I'm saying? That's the uh, uh, that's the um, influence. That's the uh, um, what's what's that word? Uh, uh, it's influence. Uh, uh, what else? It's the um, yes, yeah, the influence. You see what I'm saying? That's a big. That that's a major thing. You see what I'm saying? Um, uh, you know, basically. It, uh, you know, really should be teaching you, you know what I'm saying, the steps on life, really. You see what I'm saying? But as you get uh, older and you uh, become an adult, man, you know, you're making bad decisions. You can't just solely base that on, you see what I'm saying, on your upbringing or your family and stuff like right. that. 
But yeah, like she said, when you coddle, when you uh uh um uh, uh, uh you know what I'm saying, when you um you you condone the kind of behavior and stuff like that, you know what I mean, and and, and bad behavior and stuff like that, then then that's on you. Does that make sense? You're right. That that, that makes you know sense. What I'm I mean, that's on the parent. Excuse me. That's that's bad uh, parenting. And somebody said earlier in one of these posts that it made so much sense. If you raise your kid, if you a mom, oh, somebody somebody said that on the crimson on that same post. If you raise your kid without purposely without their father in their life, then you a bad parent. Period. That's that's a fact. That's a fact. Automatically, that shit that is bad parenting skills. When you when, right, you, uh, uh, when you take when you take and, 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 um, some of the resources and you take some of the things to you know to make your kid your kid a good uh, uh, adult in the society, then then and, 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 uh, then that's that's bad parenting, man. You don't give them the skills to do the job. You know what I'm saying? You give them the skills to live and navigate through this world. That's that's bad parenting. She got, right? she got a couple videos. I'm gonna have to play. I'm gonna play another one <laughs> next time. I was looking at, but you know, that parents, right? I mean, so uh, honestly, too. And now, right now, but I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say this real quick before we go. Uh, now it's like it's it's like it's the parenting, it's the bad parenting, but it's like it's almost like the parenting parents are less of an influence now. And guess who's raising your kids? The society and the government. That's why they are pushing all these weird agendas on these kids. That's why mm-hmm. Gavin Newsom went gruesome and all of them over here. Out here talking that shit and trying to uh, push, uh, you know, bills and stuff like that that make you know it, it uh, legal for a twelve year old to have an abortion or sex change without their parents' permission, which is don't make no damn sense. But see, that just goes to show the the dysfunction and the um the degeneracy the that these people are pushing on these kids. And like you were saying earlier, it's perfect. Even like the teacher was saying, perfect prison to pipeline. School mm-hmm. prison or school to prison pipeline. How these schools are set up, especially in our so called community. School prison pipeline, school prison to abortion pipeline. Ooh. All right, mm. All right Jack, what, what do you think about what Chris Akil was talking about there? What's that? Well, Chris Akil, she was talking about the woman saying, she was telling women don't mess with her son because he's going to be a deadbeat or something. He's a deadbeat or something. So I she was just saying that I forgot who they said he was. He was. I ain't paying attention to the age, but the woman I was grown. I will say this. Um, she said that that it sometimes it got something to do with the parent, but she was like that a lot of women, you know, they see a guy, I guess he's she, what she as her description is, he looked nice or whatever. They know there ain't nothing too much going on, but they let him shoot the club up. Have a baby and then they call him a deadbeat, but they knew what it was for happened. So that's what she was talking about, basically. I mean, hey man, <laughs> situations like that, you definitely got to take it on a case by case basis. You can't just she did. Generalize. I know we like we've been trained to think like the European and generalize every damn thing, you know. But I just say you got to take it on case by case basis. You know? And she did for the most part. She just said that yeah. well, that's she said that the woman. She said the woman basically looked out, you know, I mean, you know, by letting them know that, you know, they ain't got, she basically saying something like, almost like your, your older lady friend says um, about, um, you know, hey, man, you don't need to mess with her or um, uh, tell a woman that you don't need to mess with them. They're they not ready to deal with you right now. Like, so she basically was saying the same thing. I mean, it's interesting. So, with that being said, I'm out of here. But we just, like I said, we just got to put our heads together. Beware of chemical annihilation because we're going to have to do a show on that. So, take your time. All right. Peace. All right, y'all, man. Got you. I'm out.